Let's talk about discernment. The reason this uh, came to me is it just, I noticed that it just seems like in this world, in our country, in the United States, but in the world too, it really seems like something that's lacking. And it's quite serious. It really makes sense though, because when you read Revelation 13, and it talks about the mark of the beast, it says that everybody will take the mark of the beast. And it really doesn't even matter if we, what our opinion of the, what the mark of the beast is. One thing we can all agree on is it's not something good. Uh, I had never met anyone, I've heard a lot of theories about what the mark of the beast is, uh, but I've never heard anyone say that it's something good or desirable. So that being said, we know it's something, something bad. And the scripture says that everybody will take the mark of the beast. Um, it's kind of understood that we, it's a warning to us that we should not take the mark of the beast. You'll be destroyed in the lake of fire. So we know that we're warned to not take it. And yet it says everybody will take it. And then it defines everybody. It says big and small, rich and poor, free and slave. Just in case everyone says, well, everybody doesn't mean everybody. It, it says right there, everybody. And then it, it covers everybody. But it is a given that we should avoid taking it. Our father doesn't want us thrown into the lake of fire with uh, the false prophet and the dragon and the, uh, the son of perdition or the beast. What would lead the world to have such, such poor discernment that they would receive this mark of the beast, this thing that's put in the hand or the forehead that you will need to buy or sell? I'm not making that up. It says it right there. Read it at the end of uh, chapter 13 in Revelation. Uh, what would lead everybody to take it? What would lead even people who read the Bible, people who follow Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, what would lead them to take it when it says, don't take it? And you're having people warn you, don't take it. We know that we're not supposed to take it, and yet it sounds like people are going to take it anyway. What would lead people to such bad discernment? Well, I look around me and I see lots of problems with discernment in this world. I think we're being prepared. Our ability to discern is being weakened by constantly being bombarded with lies. We are living in a time of lies and deception. And it's interesting because Yeshua said this to the apostles. In Matthew 24, in Mark 13, and in Luke 21, read it for yourself. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, read those three chapters. They're all the, the same message, but with slightly different wording because of three different writers. The apostles ask Yeshua, what will be the sign of your return, of your coming? And the first thing he says is, be careful that nobody deceives you. So the number one thing, it has to make you think that is that the priority, the strongest thing, right? Because if you get deceived, it doesn't matter if you know the rest of the list, list of the things that he says, right? If you're already deceived, if you don't have discernment, if you can't tell right from wrong, left from right, if you can't tell the good, good guys from the bad guys, what does it matter if you're identifying earthquakes or wars and rumors of wars or calling good bad and bad good? We need to have discernment. We've already seen the test case for this when uh, they... Now bear with me and just try to read through the lines. You know, it is what it is and, I, and you have to speak a certain way or the message will never even get out. But I think you'll understand me when I say um, that we've all lived through something recently where there was a lot of manipulation and pressure on people to do things that they didn't necessarily want to do that went against all reason. And then other people gave in to the pressure because they said, well, I have to be able to do this. I have to do that. So I'm going to give in to the pressure, even though they may have even known that it was wrong or it went against all logic, everything they had ever learned. 
are you going to do things that go against everything you learn, everything you know? You could read that scripture a million times. Don't take the mark of the beast. Will you still reason in your mind? Well, and if that, what else? What other things might you do that you're not keeping true or trusting in the Father and Yeshua's word? You trust the word. We have to know the word. We have to know the word better than anyone else who has ever lived throughout all history. We can't just read the Bible casually. We have to study, but we have to pray for understanding. That's the most important thing because it's, you know, this is the most beautiful thing about the, um, the Bible, too, is if a person is evil, or has wickedness in their heart. But imagine they wanted to read the Bible and understand it just as some type of uh, propaganda. They wanted to propagandize somebody or manipulate them using the word. Who does that sound like? Sounds like Satan. Satan the devil would quote the Bible back to Yeshua, to Jesus. Uh, he, he would quote the Bible. Satan the devil knows the Bible. He knows what it says. That's not good enough because then he misquotes it. We have to know the Bible so well that so when somebody misquotes it to us, we can say, you took that out of context. What does that sound like today? Today, I hear people constantly taking messages, other people's words out of context, misquoting them and lying about them, saying, oh, well, they said this when they didn't say it at all. They're weakening people and manipul manipulating them, and, um, and people aren't using discernment. And people aren't even asking the question, did he really say that? I'm not going to trust you just because you say that about somebody. That's just your word against theirs. That's just gossip or maybe a misquote. And you, we need to ask, I mean, if you're willing to believe those things, Sooner or later, they're going to do it to you, to me. They're going to misquote us or just outright lie about us and just say we said something or did something we didn't do. Why, why wouldn't they? Satan the devil, he hates us. We're inheriting eternal life. He was thrown out of heaven. So not that we have to worry. We're protected by our Father, but things the tribulation is coming, and it's not, because, it's not called the tribulation for nothing. It's called the tribulation because it will be the worst time in all history. Uh, so we need to prepare by studying the Bible, knowing it inside and out, knowing it in context. Don't just read single scriptures, read the books, read the whole chapters in the books and know the, you know, if you can know more about it and talk with other brothers and sisters about it, let iron sharpen iron. You won't always agree with what you're talking about. That's okay. It's, if we all always agreed, uh, right, it, it would be nice, but it would be, it could be too easily, too easy. And we already see that in the Bible, Brethren did not always agree, right? Paul and who was it? Bartholomew, Barnabas. Some of them stopped talking sometimes for months or years. They had a disagreement. Did they stop being brothers, believers? It happens sometimes. Hopefully your disagreements won't be that strong. But we can't be so afraid to disagree about a scripture that we won't talk about it. And yet... We shouldn't be angry or nasty or bad. We should, whatever, everything we do, we should do it in love. And so if I love my brother or my sister, I can talk about scripture with them, not necessarily agree, or maybe they'll teach me something. Maybe I'll teach them something. Maybe neither one of us knows the truth about a certain issue. Or maybe we both have a part of the truth and we need to bring it together. We need to open our eyes and look at things in different ways and learn, but we most of all do need to have love in our hearts, that out, outgoing concern for the other person, um, 
to do we really care about them or do we just want to prove a point? So we need to study the Bible more and to practice having discernment to take all of our thoughts into subjection, into con- under, into our hands and control them and think about how we're being deceived, how we're being tricked. There's so much, right? Even in our own, the history lessons that we learned when we were in elementary school and high school, I look back at them sometimes and you hear about how some things may not have been the way they taught, or they left out a lot of history that they should have taught us. They left um, important people out of uh, history books for whatever reason reason they say the you know the winner or the victor is the one who writes the um the history book about themselves so uh we can trust the bible um everything else yeah you need to be uh, a little bit skeptical of but we need to be intelligent we need to pray for discernment and try to have it and not be deceived or manipulated into doing things or believing things that are not true uh, because a lot of false teachers, a lot of antichrists, right? It even talks about them in a plural way, these people who are going to speak against Christ, right? And they'll do it in a very subtle, crafty way, right? They'll probably come out first acting like they're a supporter of Christ, uh, of Messiah, of Yeshua. They'll first come out acting like they love him, and then they'll water it down. I, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there are people, they start off by creating doubt. Just in case you come across this heresy, I want you to be able to reject it. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think it's going to get so much worse. They'll come out, you know, the, the goal is to get you to stop believing, to apostatize, to turn your back on the Father and Yeshua. This is the goal, to stop believing. If Satan can do that, He's one. He feels happy. So he, he's crafty about it, though. He wants to create doubt. And so he'll say, mm, well, look at the book of uh, Acts. Uh, no, not the book of Acts. The book of Hebrews. Hmm. The book of Hebrews. We really don't know who wrote it. Was it Paul or wasn't it? Hmm, maybe it was, but it doesn't seem like it really fits in the Bible. So let's stop reading that. Oh, they just got their foot in the door. And if you accept that, if you're one of those people who accepts that one of the books of the Bible, we can toss it out. Satan already has his foot in the door. You should reject that. Go back and say, it's in the Bible. I'm going to trust it. And I'm going to read this. Because once he has his foot in the door, then he can say, well, what about all the other writing of Paul? All right, let's throw all that out too. Oh, but Peter, Peter says that you should trust what Paul says, even though some people would try to manipulate it. Well, get rid of Peter then too. Oh, and then James and then John. Uh, let's get rid of all of them. And I actually know there are groups of people who believe this. They throw out all of the New Testament books except for uh, Matthew, John, and Revelation. I know, it sounds weird, right? They only believe that three books in the New Testament are valid. Matthew, John, and Revelation. Uh, and I heard that a lot of times these people, not too long after, because imagine how weakened their walk and their beliefs are. If you can get rid of all of that, there's so much in all those other books of the Bible. If you can get... get convince a person to get rid of all those and only read Matthew, John, and Revelation. Uh, not too long after that, they stop, They turn their back on Yeshua and they like go into some type of Judaism. I mean, what even is modern, modern, I don't know, but does modern Judaism have much to do with the way Yeshua, he was Jewish. Yeah, he always is Jewish. And the apostles who are Jewish, the way they lived, the way they followed scripture. Because when they talked about scripture, they were talking about Genesis to Malachi, what we would call, meant Genesis to Malachi, the, what we call the Old Testament. Just that part, the beginning of the Bible. Uh, so just think of how uh, there's so much manipulation going on. Pray, pray that you're strong. Study the word so that nobody can deceive you, nobody can trick you, nobody can take a scripture out of context and deceive you and quote it and say, well, see, there it says this. And it might actually say those words, but they're using it in the wrong instance 
or are they using it in the right instance? And that's what we need to know. We need to know the spirit of it, the meaning behind it, what the words actually mean. So that you can say, yeah, actually, brother, sister, you're right. That is true. Or no, you took that out of context. You twisted it a little bit. And often it'll start off small and the twist gets bigger as time goes on. So we have to be wise and ask for discernment. Remember, when Yeshua was there, it makes sense. Weren't the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, I think it was mostly the Pharisees, they were constantly trying to trick him. And they were trying to trick him like biblically, like they would quote scripture, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about this situation? They were trying to get him into a corner and trap him and trip him, trip him up. But he always gave a brilliant answer. Well, we have his spirit in us. So ask for that wisdom. Turn it around on them and say, hey, like he would do. Well, let me ask you a question. Don't always be so fast to give an answer if they, if it's a trap. We can ask them a question and say, well, what do you think this means? And if they can't answer, say, well, I'm not going to answer you either. It worked for Yeshua. Why wouldn't it work for us? We need to be um, wise and we need to have discernment. So I pray that all of you have discernment. I pray, please pray that I have discernment and continue to study your Bible more fervently than ever. It's the most important thing now, no matter what how what your perspective is on the Bible. Study, learn it, know it, and, um, and let iron sharpen iron. Talk to other people about it. Find someone else who you can share and talk about these issues with and um, do it in a loving way.